Get it. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear oh, that. <laughs> Oliver it. just gave the most little whimper. Pathetic whimper in yeah, the world. I don't know what that was for. He's qu- he's usually really quiet. No, that's a lie too. No, he knows. He knows anytime... When the voiceover comes yep. on, he starts going nuts. But I don't mean he's quiet. I mean, he makes a lot of noise, but he doesn't actually meow a lot. Yeah. He's not a very vocal cat. He's no. a loud cat. Noisy cat. Yeah. Trash cat. <laughs> just not very vocal. I mean, he is vocal, but it's more like little squeaks. He actually goes into the bathtub to... Squeak. Squeak. He, really he sounds cute. like a little pigeon sometimes. Yeah, it's cute. I think he goes in there because he knows it echoes and it gets yeah. louder. <laughs> <laughs> it's his microphone. Either way, welcome to day six of Junicorn. A minute in, haven't even said hello. Hi. G'day, friends. Yeah, this is Steve. <laughs> this is Steve and James. Uh, so day six, actually... The yeah, second it, to last day. The, ne- uh, the next one's the last Junicorn video. Oh man, it flew by. It did fly by, actually. <laughs> um, no, as you know, we have pre-recorded all of these Junicorn videos, which was a, a real blessing, actually, because yeah. I don't know what I'm going to be feeling at the, the current point that this is uploaded, <laughs> but I'm assuming it's some kind of exhausted. Yeah. Knowing what I have planned for the next couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think you're catching me planned. at my freshest now. Right. Um, but yeah, so let's have a chat today. The piece I'm going to make is it's a unicorn. Is it, is it a unicorn? A deer, a deer corn. A deer corn. <laughs> um, basically I had this little fragment. So, you know, the little fragments packs, the die cut packs, right? right? I had little swatch dolls one. And, um, as you know, as you do when you're making your little examples, you uh-huh. color them all in, you have fun. Um, so I have a bunch that are just lying around that I actually have never used before because I, I made so many samples. Got it. And then just put them in a, a little, you know, hoarded them somewhere. Right. Okay. So um, I had one and honestly, I have been so close to getting rid of it. Every single time I go to pick it up, I just don't love it. With the little swatch, the little... Frame. Yeah. I love the shading of its face, but I, I think it's just a little overboard and I was determined to get it used. Um... Or, because I, I couldn't bring myself, I was almost really close to putting in one of the um, Studio Spring Clean grab bags, actually. Oh. Um, but I just, I thought because it presented such a mental trauma for me, <laughs> trying to get it used, I thought it'd be a big sense of accomplishment to actually finally get it down, used, in whatever way I could. So, oh. um, it kind of spawned the rest of the piece. Got it. That, that followed. So and this was the inspiration, aside from the unicorn. Yeah, I guess you could say the unicorn was kind of an afterthought in this one because it was all about this stupid... That, there That's it is. <laughs> I loved the shading in its face. I thought it was really funny, but I just don't love it. I, I don't know. It's just not... It's not very... I know what that's appealing like. Appealing to me. I know what that's like to have right. something, to create something that you kind you you don't love, but you love it, but you don't love, but then you love it. Mm-hmm. I understand that. You do understand that. Yeah, I'm I've got a feeling well. we're going to get to that. Maybe eventually. <laughs> um, but yeah, either way, I'll just let you know this much. I did want to get that piece used, so it kind of dictated the color palette and the randomness that ensued. There is like a little swatch cityscape going on there. I've got a collaged moon face, Cinderella moon face. Moon face. Um, I've got from an old, like random little piece of scrap, nothing that, yep, that <laughs> I've, um, I did some clouds, which were just a little off and also did some like random little flower things. Yeah. But this is like a but, weird but, galaxy of nothing. Yeah. But I mean, to you, it might be off, but to somebody else, it might be like breathtaking. Breathtaking, breathtaking is a strong choice. <laughs> you never know. A beauty, art, and beauty are, is, um, are in the eye of the beholder. It's true. I, I don't hate it. I actually, I do like that there's a lot of interesting things to look at. Um, I think it's a little otherworldly, but it, this this presented a challenge to me in the sense that I had, I um, I had something I really wanted to make work, and in some way, shape, or form, I knew I needed to like reuse it, recycle it, refresh it, do something to get rid of it from sitting on my table. Okay. Because it was, it was bringing me stress, a little bit of stress. So, but you chose to use it instead of just scrapping it. Yeah. Okay. Good for you. Sometimes I would scrap it because there are things I like about it. But th- there right, are, there, you the, liked it enough to not scrap yeah, it. Yeah. The face shading, I liked it, but the little pom pom things with the aqua fluff detail. I actually just, think that's really cute. See, I don't, I'm not into that. And yeah. I don't really love the color palette of the, of the dress. There's a, I like it. A but then again, you have to remember that you and I see things differently. We see things very differently. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I see things right. Steve does not. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> no, we just... Look, we are very, very... Oh, Steve's going to close the window. 
can hear the trucks. Yeah. We have very, very different types of creatives, Steve and I. You would you agree? Yeah. Is that the statement I'm looking for? Yeah, we are different, but you need to have different because if it was the same, it'd be boring. That's what Steve keeps telling me. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, I think it is. It keeps life interesting. You know what I mean? It does keep it interesting. It, I mean, definitely doesn't go with go down without a fight every now and then. But no, it doesn't. Would you like to talk about it? No. <laughs> it's not, I mean, when this gets posted, it will have been days, well, days past. It will have. So, I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess we can talk about it. We're going to sit here in awkward silence no. if we don't. <laughs> no, look, so I just finished, uh, when, when, the, when this, re this uh, let me, find your words, Steve. When this voiceover was recorded, I just finished and uh, completed uh, another blog post. But it was a photo shoot that I had uh, actually done just about two years ago. And I was uh, really excited to do the shoot, but when I started uh, to edit and go into it, um, it just, I, I couldn't find my, um, I couldn't find my muse kind of left me for a while and it took me like two years of just kind of shelving the project dealing with some personal stuff and then going back and revisiting again before I decided you know what like, like I really need to complete this and so in going for it and doing it um, bringing the bringing it uh, to James to like you know get some critique and some feedback and stuff and some help um, would turn into like massive just arguments and it got down to the point where I was like babe like it's, it's just pictures it's just art. <laughs> it's not that serious. And then it would just, we would just, we wouldn't go down without a fight. And it was just yeah. a difference of, in opinion is a difference in point of view and it's a difference in aesthetic, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm not very clear in, you know, what I see in my head or how to execute it or how to speak about it. And so then that gets him frustrated because James is for the most part more on the literal side. Yeah, and uh, and then I'm I'm not so literal. I'm more feeling. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll get f felt out. And that the um the the ambiguity and the and the vagueness of it all um becomes overwhelming for him. Yeah, I'm gonna take a bit of a 360 approach here and just try not to you just begin, um, give your unicorn leg warmers. Yeah. <laughs> Very 80s. Oh my gosh, she's so cats. <laughs> Very Xanadu. <laughs> she's gone to the Jellicle Ball, y'all. Ms. Mistopheles. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to try and give it a 360 view and just sum up my feelings about the, uh, the whole process. Look, the thing that I had the biggest issue with is that I, in every effort I, I made, I just wanted Steve to feel confident. I wanted him to feel assured and I wanted him to uh, be happy. But Steve's a bit of a tortured creative and yeah. I don't relate well to that because I am a delusionally confident creative. <laughs> I am super decisive. I will make a decision and run with it until I find out that it's the wrong one. Uh, but Steve's a bit more calculated from the beginning and would like to softly put uh, his toe in the water Which is so to see interesting. how cold it is. Yeah, but it's so interesting that you say that because then I'm like, mm, I'll figure it out. And you're like, what do you mean you're going to figure it out? Well, okay, so not only do we have a different aesthetic because we're different human beings, we have different eyes. Steve had LASIK, so I'm assuming he's got better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, we have different work styles as well. Yeah. And, and that was where I was having a big issue because Steve is a very, I'll have all my options and I'll have them until the end kind of person. Yeah, I want to weigh, it all, weigh all of them out. Yeah, I'm pick one and go for it. Mm -mm. Cinderella, just go for it. No. <laughs> yeah. I, um, no, I have, I have to do that because if I'm, if my brain is allowed to be too open when I have, when I don't have any kind of boundaries confusing. or guidelines, yeah, I, I get too overwhelmed and I think I'm actually less productive that way. And I, I think one of the biggest struggles too is I was approaching it from a very, business standpoint yeah um because my creativity has turned into uh, not just something that i do for myself as a form of self-expression but something that i share on a public platform yeah. that i also have made a business and a brand out of yeah so that to me was really confusing trying to bring it back to a place of hey this is steve's passion project it's okay mm -hmm. Um, but it, it was also, there was a big challenge in that Steve had left the shoot shelved for a couple of years. Yeah. And how do you really come back and revisit something when your skill set has had two, in your words, like two years of acceleration? Yeah, two years of growth. Yeah. Two years of practice, two years of new ideas, of being in a, a different place personally than you were two years ago. I think we're all kind of, I mean, imagine doing it the same artwork that you did two years ago and trying to 
bring a new eye to it. Well, even you, like going back to some of the stuff that you've originally, that you created two years ago at the beginning of your business. Yeah, sometimes it feels foreign. That, that's what's crazy is when you really think about it, this yeah. started in 2016 for me. Yeah, you look at your original Digi stamps. Two years ago, go back to the start of my Instagram. Now imagine me trying to produce that as today's piece. Yeah. It, it, it would be it, very it, difficult for me yeah, to wrap feels, my head around. Yeah, it feels backwards. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and that's how I felt creating this shoot. But then I I had to fight. I had to fight it. I had to, I had to go past yeah. it. I had to look past it all. It, it, go and read it if you haven't actually read it. I'll have, I'm going to put it in my Insta story anyway because I think some people might enjoy reading some of the thoughts behind it because it is a real, a very real struggle for any, anyone that does anything mm. creatively that, that confronts one of their biggest challenges and it ends up being themselves. Yeah. It's a hundred percent yourself. You get in your own way. I got in my own way with it. Your expectations. My, just... Yeah. And I don't know why I had these like crazy amount of expectations. Like who was I trying to impress? Baz Luhrmann. <laughs> <laughs> As if he's going to stop by my blog. You never know. You, he could. He could. Catherine and Barry Luhrmann could be just uh, perusing even. Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yes, Catherine Martin, his wife. You want to do your best. I think that's the point. Yeah, and I, it's it's one of those things. If you do leave two years of a gap between something, you know what your best is now, and your best now is actually like quite incredible, considering that for, you are for the most part self taught, right? Mm, in yeah, photography, pretty much. It's a it's About a passion. Ninety percent. Yeah, you did a short course or a, a college credit course or something. Yeah, I took like one semester of photography one hundred and one, and this is back when like this is pre when film was cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the nostalgia of retro right. film. So like I'm, a bone to pick with you film photographers yeah. that get your stuff digitally processed. Yes. <laughs> this is like this is you know when when di when digital was the one hundred percent way to go. You know like people who used to shoot on film cameras at this point had completely sold all of their film equipment. You know mm. all their film cameras, all their lenses and stuff to get an Olympus to, to point get, and shoot. Right. Or yeah. Or to get like you know the new um, DSLR because that's what it was. Yeah. And so I had to go find and. Luckily, I was able to borrow my friend's Canon AE-1 film camera, which is like just a really basic starter camera, but it's a really great camera with a 50 millimeter lens. <laughs> and uh, film camera, took a course once a week, had class and the other, and one day of the week was a lab and we'd go in and we would learn how to process and develop our film. In the dark room. In the dark room, all by yourself, yeah. literally in a pitch black room where you have to feel your way through the like through the roll, how to unroll mm. your film and how to put it back into the canister and with the amount of then you turn the lights on, you put the liquids in the the formula and then you shake it up and then you know. But I it's crazy. Some of those chemicals might be quite toxic, actually. Yeah, maybe that's why I started going gray so early. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was just the stress. No, yeah, but I mean, but that's all I have was was just like one semester. I don't even think I ever got my grade because I was like, nah. I don't really care. Yeah. I'm learning exactly what I want to learn. That's the difference too. If you if you have a passion for it, you will learn it. Mm -hmm. And now with YouTube now, mm -hmm. with free tutorials out there, yeah. you have a wealth of information for the, for the price of whatever your internet subscription is. I am. Um, I just don't think there's a, a reason for anyone not learning and growing anymore. No, and you can. I mean, I think if you don't, it's just it's just sheer laziness. I think. I mean, because, and if, look, everything in life is figure outable. You better watch yourself, Steve. I know. <laughs> but, and like, We're and on I, the internet right, now. No, 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 but I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. Well, because, there's an exception for every rule. Let's yeah. put that out there, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I'm definitely like. Laziness was a part of, 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 of yeah, your struggle? Yeah, I, I think laziness was definitely a part of my struggle because it was also like, it was laziness in the fact that I let myself become defeated. Mm. So I self-sabotage myself. And once you do that, you go into a spiral. And then it's easier to find excuses. Right. And, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, two years down the road, I mean, with, you know, my own understanding of, of, of how to take pictures and then knowing that I had to go into Photoshop and adjust and enhance these images um, became daunting and overwhelming and frustrating. Yeah. But then you came to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> I was offering a. Um, I look. I really struggled through the uh, helping process, but we're getting there. We're going to. Yeah, that's um, great. We're still learning how to help each other properly. I think. Yeah, but um, anyway, need suffice it to say. I will leave a link down to it below. If actually, if you actually want to go and read um, and, and look at the photos, and if you want to go and read a bit more about the struggle and a bit more about the process, I think yeah. some people might benefit from knowing, um, like the truth behind some of this stuff. Yeah, thanks. Please do. It's look. Two years ago, I decided I wanted to do. Well, first, let me back backtrack it. One of uh, my favorite directors, my favorite film directors of all time, is um, 
is Baz Luhrmann. And uh, if you know Baz Luhrmann, if you know his films, he is the one who um, brought Strictly Ballroom, Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes, Leonardo DiCaprio, Moulin Rouge, and uh, The Great Gatsby along with the movie Australia. That kind of put him on the, on the map. That's what he's best known for. He also did a very famous um, campaign for Chanel Number no. 5 starring Nicole Kidman. Love that. It's super beautiful. Um, he also brought um, the opera La Boheme to the stage um, in a very new, innovative way. Anyway, so two years ago, I decided I want to do a couple photo shoots based off of Baz Luhrmann fil films. And of course, if you've seen any of his films, you just see how high intensity they are. They're very colorful. They're larger than life. And, you know, just use of camera angles and camera quick. tricks. Quick. You know, large sets. It's very extravagant. Beautiful costuming. It's They're just some of the most incredible visual feasts of storytelling and a lot of his films like the core theme is love and he just expresses love in so many different ways and it's so interesting and so beautiful and I'm just such a geek for it <laughs> and uh, one of my all-time favorite film of his is I mean I love all of his films individually it's hard and to believe uniquely, you have a favorite actually. but my favorite film of his is Moulin Rouge and I think it's the musical aspect it's the love aspect it's the euro aspect it's you know Nicole Kidman aspect. There's so many parts of it that, of course, I, I, I love. And so uh, I wanted to do a Moulin Rouge inspired film and, you know, it took shoot. a lot of, uh, sorry, excuse me, a Moulin Rouge inspired shoot. And it took a lot of time, energy, effort, money. Money. Um, yeah, it just <laughs> took a lot. And so I think because I got overwhelmed with kind of the organizational and the creative process the prior to the shoot, I think that may, might have kind of just like, maybe filtered into the shoot and the post-production and stuff and then, you know, life happens and stuff gets in the way and then you get into your own head. But anyway, it's on my blog. I was um, going to say, also, it was actually coming off a year of doing holiday-inspired shoots. Yeah, so I think there's something also to be said for the come down of a big success. Yeah. And what you what to do next, the next steps. I, and I, I believe it probably is touched on a lot in your in the book yeah. you're reading, right? Yeah. What do you do when your best work is behind you, or what do you right. do when Big you're afraid you won't? Yeah. yeah, when you won't um, succeed like you just have. Right. I think one of those maybe that was a part of getting in your head too. I, we don't need to have this talk on, yeah. <laughs> on camera, um, but it, it's a, either way, it's a really interesting yeah. um, look into a creative's process. Steve is a very different type of creative than I am, and uh, his photography is beautiful either way. So go and Thank check you. it out if you want to know a bit more about that. We'll be back with a, uh, another voiceover to recap and end all of Junicorn in yeah. a couple days. But I do love this. I like even that little thing that you put, the always be on the lookout for the presence of wonder. And had, you right. ne and had you never said, or like, had you never told me that you were struggling with that um, with that fragment, I would have never known. Because it oh, just, really? Yeah, it's super seamless. And I'm living for, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say his very long unicorn horn. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Because, <laughs> you know. And his little fairy wings? Right, his little fairy wings. <laughs> because Bringing it right back full circle to day one of Junicorn and the gender stereotypes right. issue. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a piece full of male characters yes. today. <laughs> <laughs> Even little Swatch doll is a male today. Yeah, you know, <laughs> could be feeling that robe. Oh yeah, she's giving you live she honey. She or he? Oh, well, there we go. Now we're confused. Now you again. get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.